Would you all stand all over the building, please? We are actually going to the next level. How many of you believe that? Well, that was about 50 of you. How many of you believe you're going to the next level? Come on, let's fill this room with some praise. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you being here this morning. And for those of you who are streaming, thank you, thank you so much for staying alive. Because God's not through with you yet. Would you look at your neighbor and say, let's go to the next level. Come on. Prophesy to somebody and tell them, let's go to the next level. Amen. Let's remain standing. Can I get my folder, please? Can I get it? Amen. Remain standing. Thank you. I want to, to let you know we'll do the, the offering at the end of the, the message. So what I do ask, for those of you who are streaming, if you'll be so kind not to log off immediately, and those of you who are on campus at the end of the sermon, just flow with the Holy Spirit this morning. And, and I, I know uh, we're busy people and we want to beat the traffic and all that kind of a stuff, but let's receive the seed first and we'll all be dismissed together. I didn't want to, uh, last night I called uh, Pastor Kevin and I said, let's rearrange. God told me, wait, do not receive the offering until the end. I'm going to follow his instruction. Amen. So please work with us. Now is a good time for each and every one of you who are streaming to share the link with a friend because I believe that God's got a word for us as we begin the month of September, the ninth month. So let's go. It's only up from here. Somebody didn't get that. I said it's only up from here. You can't go under. You can't go below. It's only up The Lord would send me here today to talk to you on the subject of simply level up spiritually and mentally. Level up with your spiritual life and how you think in your thoughts. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this gracious moment that we were all given to be in your presence, whether we are on campus or people at work, people at home traveling, and they're watching this service, I don't believe it is an accident why they are here and why they are streaming. I believe that you've tailored this sermon for them. And I know the enemy, he has plans right now. He is so scared of the revelation that that woman is going to receive, that man is going to receive. So he's going to do everything to distract them now. He's going to allow their thoughts to wander. He's going to allow their children to be making noise. He's going to allow all kinds of stuff. He's going to allow even the person next to them to do something to distract them. But Father, we take authority over the atmosphere, whether it's virtually or on campus. And we ask that the only voice people will hear is that the voice of the Holy Spirit speak today in a very special way and we'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on with the clapping of hands. Let's celebrate it. God bless you and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Level up spiritually and mentally. Leveling up is all about you taking your life.
to the next level, spiritually and mentally. It's an upgrade. It is making the decision that you're going to move your life from its current position and get deeper in God, deeper in Jesus Christ, and deeper in how you think. May I suggest to most of you today that one of the reasons, not the only, but one of the reasons why your life is not where it should have been, it's not that people had power systems, had power over you, it's simply because of the way you think. The way a man thinks, that's who you are. You're a negative thinker. Your life will go down. It'll never increase. If you think everybody's out to get you, if you think everybody's evil, if you think you're the only righteous one and you're only pure and holy one on the planet, you will always walk around falsely saying you're a discerner so everybody else is going to hell and only you going to heaven. You're the only righteous one. It's the way you think. If you look at people who are making progress and they're financially well or their families are together and you're always envious or jealous or passing remarks and trying to criticize them of their success. Look at your own life. It is amazing. I stand by and I watch people and that's why I don't let people's criticism redefine who I am. Because if you're going to criticize me, if you're going to spend the rest of your life pointing out what Henry is, what he's not, when I look at your life, if your life is not better than my life, I don't have time to wait on you. Because you don't measure up to where I'm going. You don't. So a lot of times it is our mindset that is holding us back. You see, when we talk about leveling up spiritually and mentally, it is making decisions to elevate your current position, your current living position, the way you think and so forth, to a higher standard. What do I mean by that? That means setting clear goals. Working towards achieving those goals and making progress to be your best self, to becoming your best self. Level up. Nobody has the power to control you and stop your progress. So when I say level up, elevate your life from its current position and set Clear goals. Goals that says, I am who God says I am. I will fulfill my God-given purpose before I die. As a male, I will fulfill my God-given purpose. What has God created me to be? He has created me, watch this, to be a male. He doesn't make a mistake. He has created me to be a woman. He doesn't make a mistake. So therefore... I'm going to level up and I'm going to set clear goals, who I am. Do I want to get married or do I want to stay single? It's, it's your choice. Because if anybody tell you everybody on the earth will get married, that's a lie. And you have to really discern and see if you are marriage material. Not See, there, there are people who are getting married. You are not marriage material. You're not because you're self-centered. Everything is about you. The spotlight has always has to be on you, and you always need to be serve and not serve in. 
So you're not marriage material if all you see is yourself because when you get hooked up with another person, you're called into the union of marriage to serve. So when you date a woman and it's all about her serving you, you're going to damage that woman because you're in a union of oneness still being single. Look at your neighbor and say, you better level up. He's ready today. (laughs) If you can't handle this, now's a good time to kind of just step right out of the service. You got to set goals. Who do you want to be? What goals do you want to achieve as a single person or as a couple? What goal do you want to achieve as a business owner? working on the job? What are your goals when you get into your senior years? What are your spiritual goals? Does the church, does the body of Christ, does God mean anything to you? For some of us, we must admit that we uh, must rise to a greater, greater level of maturity when it comes to our faith journey. We have to admit it, man. Now is not a time for us to try to ignore the fact that we're not where we should be at this stage of our lives. And we have to level up, spiritually level up and get our minds to think that we're not where God wants us to be. So therefore, we're going to make the progress or we're going to make, uh, the, or take the steps, if you will, to becoming the best version of who God has created us to be. Hebrews 6, chapter 1, very powerful scripture. And I really want you to pay attention to this. The apostle Paul stated it this way. He said, therefore, let us watch this move, move, move. He didn't say stand firm, still. He said, therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again, again, the foundation of repentance from acts that leads to death and the faith in God. Now, this is powerful. The Apostle Paul says, move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ. Some of you have been in church too long to be immature. You've been following Christ too long to be spiritually immature and to be thinking like a child. Why do you let church people rub you the wrong way? And you've been in church 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Why do you get so sensitive? Paul says, let us move beyond the elementary teachings. Why do you get so upset? When you hear a sermon and maybe parts of the sermon, everything else in the sermon you love, but just one little part the preacher says, all of a sudden you've canceled the entire message because you're still acting like a child. Why are you running from God? Why are you hiding? Why are you letting church and the craziness of ministry cause you to conclude, I'm not going to church anymore? I'm upset. I'm angry at church. I'm angry at a pastor. I'm angry at his wife. I'm angry at the deacons. I'm angry at the ushers. I'm angry at people. And and I'm just angry. Let us move beyond the elementary teachings of Christ. Why do you get angry over giving when a preacher stands or anybody stands and asks to give to a church? Are you still a baby that you're going to fuss over giving? Paul said, let's move beyond that immature stage. Is it about Christ or is it about you, your feelings? And then he says, not laying against the foundation of repentance. Once you repent, you're totally submitted to Jesus Christ. Because the life you now live is not your own 
It is a life that's living in Christ. And for many of us, there has been a pulling by the Spirit of God to pull us away from spiritual immaturity. Do you know how long God's been hunting you down? Do you not know that God daily, he's using ordinary circumstances to work on your mind. That's why every now and then the Holy Spirit works on your conscience. And that's why he's constantly knocking at your door and say, come on, girl, get your act together. Come on, sir, you know better. That is why you're restless. That is why God has really created a cluster of things to happen in your life to get your attention and somehow you're still acting like a child. And God is trying to arrest you because he sees the best in you. And he wants you to become your best self. But you still grown, fully grown, and acting like a spiritual, immature, sensitive Christian. You see, spiritual immaturity is all about the childish way of thinking when it comes to your priorities. You do, you do things by getting God's order out of alignment. You're not in alignment with God's word. You know, you don't put God first in your life. Spiritual uh, immaturity causes you to put things out of order. You've got yourself, you've got your family, you've got your friends, you've got your career, you've got your money, you got entertainment because we all want to be entertained. And boy, do we spend money on entertainment. Do we spend? There are folks today, this Labor Day weekend, broke as a doornail, but still having fun. There are people out partying right now this weekend. They are broke. Not that they have the money. They are broke. And they're going to turn to God by Tuesday. Help me out of this debt, God. There's nothing more pitiful than a broke person having fun. Okay. I lost them, Jesus. So they constantly need to be medicated. Watch this. With entertainment to get them out of depression. Instead of looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith, they want to be entertained. They want to go to clubs and parties and they do drugs and they go to the wrong crowd because you see their whole life, family, friends, career, money, and God is out of line. It's not aligned properly. God may be at the bottom and the truth is God only comes into play when their back is against the wall. When they have no one to turn to. Because for many of us, you see, our job is first, or you first, or your, your children are first, your relationship, your pursuit for a relationship is first. Money is first, and boy, it is heavy. Money money's always first. But God stays at the bottom, and we on, watch this. We only get to him. Watch this. You've got all of these things, and he's at the bottom. And the only way you turn to him is when every step collapse. Then you stand before God now, and oh, God, help me out of this. And the moment he pulls you up and gets you to another level, you go right back. To, instead of taking him here, keeping him here. Spiritual immaturity is all about what you think about God and his body, the church. Spiritual immaturity 
makes you think and question God and watch this in your mind. Ah, does he God exist? Does he love me? Does he care about me? Why God blesses this person over that person? Why is God allowing all this crazy stuff to happen in our world and government and politics and on the job? And why is my family so crazy and so forth? And why is the church so dysfunctional? And for some of you even streaming, the reason why you're even streaming from home, yes, thank God that you're streaming, but you have been so broken and you have concluded that it doesn't make sense to go to church watch this because they are a bunch of hypocrites so you rather watch the body of Christ from a distance spiritual immaturity is about what you think about the church Is my attachment to the church, to God, or is it to people? <laughs> Spiritual immaturity is about your perception, about generosity. Isn't it funny how we believers and non-believers are quick to spend money on everything else and we don't question it? God, when he comes to church, the devil puts into our minds everything about our giving, and we may think, well, you know, ah, I don't want to give because, you know, why should I give the church my money? The pastor looked like he's got it okay. You summed it up. You figure much less. Well, this must be about $200. His jeans must be about a thousand. We, we sum it all up. Do I really need to give? And watch this. For some of you, you go to concerts. You go to events. Have you been to the movie theaters lately and see what the ticket prices are? Oh, don't even let me talk about Beyonce's concert. Now, I'm not knocking her. I'm not knocking her. I'm not knocking her, please. Come on, follow me here now. Don't let me talk about all these concerts you are going. You never look at Beyonce's outfit and say, I wonder how much that costs. You just pay your money and you go have your fun. But when it comes into the church, all of a sudden, the devil just twists your mind. I'm not giving them no money. Touch your neighbor and say, if you went to Beyonce concert, he's not mad at you. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing when I look at Ticketmasters and all these secular events, secular events. When I look, average tickets, $250. $500. Artists, listen, artists who are old. <laughs> Been around long time. When you look at the ticket prices, bleachers ticket prices, it's incredible. And people, it's sold out. But if the church has an event and... Nothing is free. We've got to pay artists. We've got to pay for the events and everything like that. It's hard to get, watch this, the believer to support it. Why, why is it the secular artist can release an album, bam, number one on the chart, bam, make a lot of money out of it, but let a gospel artist release an album, And we Christians, and please, I do not want you to think that pastor is saying you should not listen to some of those music. If you know Henry Fernandez, there are some music out there in the world I have no problem with. It doesn't go against my faith. For example, if I uh, want to feel love from my spouse, if I want to feel love and intimacy, if I'm dancing with my wife, I... I I, I don't need no gospel song. I don't need, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. There ain't no time for that. 
I want me a song that will bring the man out of me. Okay. And all the religious people rebuking me right now. <laughs> but we support them. But because we're so immature, not knowing it is a plan of the enemy to keep the church bound, to keep the church to support the kingdom of darkness more than it supports itself. Being spiritually immature cause you to think of generosity as why should I give to my God assignment and turn a blind eye to that but yet freely give to stuff, watch this, that may not be wrong but it doesn't magnify the kingdom of God. You can tell when someone is spiritually mature. Yes, you can. By how committed they are to meditating on the Word of God. Because the Word of God will teach them how to prioritize everything. All those things that I talked about. Where to put yourself. Where to put God. Where to put your family. Where to put your friends. Where to put your career. Your money. Entertainment. You see, when you're spiritually mature... You aligned your life up the proper way. God is first. God is always first. And then some people say, my wife, my husband, my family. No, God is first, then yourself. Because if you do not value or love yourself, it is impossible for you to truly love somebody else. Come on now. When you're spiritually mature, it changes your thinking because now you're meditating on the Word of God. And the moment you meditate on the Word of God, I promise you, the Word of God will teach you how to get things right. Spiritual maturity will tell you uh, that prayer must be important. How prayer is important to you. The value that you place on corporate fellowship, corporate fellowship, this is why we're here. What value do you place on corporate fellowship? What value? How important it is for us to dwell together as brothers and sisters because the scripture says, forget not the gathering of ourselves together. Spiritual maturity says, I got to go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Nobody has to beg you. When you go to the house of the Lord, you're not going to the house of the Lord for the preacher. You're not going to the house of the Lord for anybody else. You come to the house of the Lord for God. So even if you come to the house of the Lord and somebody, whether it's an usher, whether it is people, whether it's somebody sitting in your row, said something, did something that you did not like because you know why you are in the house, you don't let people turn you off from corporate Worship, spiritual maturity also helps you to have a good attitude toward generosity. Spiritually mature people understand the power of generosity. The power to activate the word when it comes to generosity. When you're spiritually mature and you get into your word, that word teaches you how to be generous, how to give to the poor, understanding your blessing comes from how much you're willing to release. That when God speaks to you and he puts before you an opportunity for you to give, that you give. That maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's a co-worker. That the Holy Spirit will just say, look, don't ask her any questions. Just give her $30. Maybe she needed for gas. That you won't immediately start thinking, child, I need gas myself, I don't know. <laughs> or, you know, I mean, you, you, you'd be surprised that the moment God speaks to you, you release it. Spiritual mature people is that God will always drop in your spirit like many of you right now. I wonder how long God's been telling you, hey, 
When was the last time you, give, you gave to the church a spiritual seed that I told you to give? That thought that you had in your mind when you said, here's a specific amount, I'm telling you, give that. But when you're immature, you questioned it, and you think you're losing, but those who are spiritual understand. Wait a minute now. If God tells you to sow a seed, first of all, he has given you the seed. <laughs> he gives seed to the sower. He'll never tell you to give something that he has not provided. So when he speaks to you and say, give, it shall be given back to you, then you ought to respond. And I, I could sense it. I hear it. I hear some of you under your breath. You just said, but what if God never told me to give anything? See, that's the problem. You don't want to hear him. You have already said, I don't even want to hear that, God. Tell me everything else about how I can get blessed. But I don't want you to hear hear from you, you telling me to be a blessing. You have no idea how you're preventing yourself from going to the next level because you refuse to activate the spirit of generosity in your life. Spirit of generosity has brought me to where I am today. Spirit of generosity has helped this ministry to be where it is today. You've heard the story before. See, some of you are thinking you can't be generous because of your circumstances, because of your losses. That is a lie. See, the, the, if the enemy can get you to a place to believe in order for you to be elevated to, to the next level, watch this. Everything has to be perfect. That is a lie. Sometimes what God does is in your most vulnerable condition, in your most hurt, your losses, he'll thrust you and push you and say, give Isaac sowed in time of famine. Who, who would want to give when there's a shortage? And I remember... Uh, a couple of years ago when this ministry was at the Lauder Hill location, I took $475,000. It was just the most stupidest thing I did. I was stupid when I did that. We had a contractor that just befriended me, and I trusted him, and we were adding uh, the, 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 the you know, canopy there at the church, and, and uh, if you remember that facility, we didn't have a canopy walkway, so if it rained before you get into the building, you know, there was no covering. And I literally took all of the money we saved, $475,000, boom, gave it to a contractor. The moment I gave it to him, he disappeared. That was a huge loss for me, huge loss. I felt embarrassed, I felt stupid, and I admitted it. I made a mistake. I'm human. I didn't steal it. I gave the God the money. What losses have you had in your life? And are you telling me that in your losses that God won't push you to say, hey, go to the next level of generosity? You know what God told me to do? In my depression, trust me, I was. In my depression, not only depression, but in my anger. <sighs> when I tell you I was angry... When I tell you I wanted to take off my pastor's robe and go hunt for that joker. Has anybody ever stole money from you or you loaned somebody money and they don't want to give it back to you? You don't want to hear from God right then. You want to go handle the situation by yourself. Can I get some real people screaming in the building? I want it to go look for the man and I was not going to preach the gospel to him. <laughs> and in my depression, I left Fort Lauderdale and went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I just wanted to get out of town. I went to the Maybe Center or Roberts facility. Joyce Myers was having an event there. This was before Joyce Myers blew up and everything like that. And I'm sitting in the bleachers because some of you, I understand, you're not in front row. You're not down on the first floor. Somehow God's got you way out. And you watch other people on stage performing and getting blessed. And you 
You're standing and seated in the bleachers and you're looking down. God, when? When is it my turn? When are you going to give me a stage of greatness? When are you going to open the floodgates of heaven on my life? When are you going to give me a prophetic word? That was Henry. I was in the bleachers and I was angry. I was bitter. And I was saying, God, what am I going to do? This is all. This is a little church. We, we don't have the money. And, and, and more, I think for me, it was more kicking myself because how could you be that stupid how could you trust somebody don't trust nobody put it in a contract oh I learned the big way if I'm lending you a dollar you're going to give me your social security number you're going to give me your address you're going to give me your fingerprint I even want to take a print of your eyeballs I felt stupid And in my anger, in the bleachers, I said, God, I don't know what's going on. And they were performing on stage. Joyce Myers, Richard Roberts, Earl Roberts, and uh, Joe Darty was on stage. And every minute they would come interrupt Joyce Myers. I mean, prophetic word. They would come and just stop Joyce Myers and prophesy a word to the audience. And finally, Joyce Meyer, she closed her notes and she said, obviously God is up to something. And she started ministering and Joyce Myers looked like she was looking at me. I know she doesn't know me. She just looked. I, I, have you ever come to church and you're in the building and it's like the preacher looking dead straight at you and you're like, who, me? And she said, Whatever you believe in God for, just trust him and put your faith in it. And the moment she said that, the next thing that God, because again, spiritual maturity, the next thing I heard God said to me, I'm going to show you how the faith center is going to thrive. And God said, before they even ask, God said, sow a seed. I had, it wasn't quite $400 cash in my pocket. And I took it out and I said, okay, I'm going to give it. They didn't even ask for it immediately. The moment God said that to me, um, I think it was Richard, not Richard, um, Carlton Pearson. He came out and he just starts saying, well, God is talking to someone to sow a special seed. I'm in the bleachers. Folks started coming down, giving their seed. I left the bleachers, walked all the way down, and dropped every cash money I had. And I left it, because watch this. My sheep hear my voice. If God never told me to do it, I wouldn't have done it. I wonder how many people streaming in this room, you know, you can hide among the crowd, but you cannot lie to yourself how many times the Holy Spirit has prompted you take your life to the next level by being generous. Give to that man you see. Give to that woman. Give to the church. But you don't. And you wonder why you're still at the same place? I released it. Now watch this. If you're spiritually immature, you already start judging me. This is manipulation. He's just trying to do this to get the people to give. Depending on the level you're thinking. Now, when I look at my life versus your life, if you don't have a testimony and evidence of what faith and seed can do, don't argue with me because I'm living proof. Generosity works. Do I have a witness out there? Living proof. I gave the seed. And I walked away. I flew back to Fort Lauderdale the next day. And I turned it over to God. And I'll never forget it. I received a phone call from uh, Robert Bland. And he called me. He said, Henry, uh, the Lord told me to call you. See, the moment you release what God told you to do, he's got somebody lined up already to bless you. Uh, Don't hold your blessing, man, because you don't want to obey God. The man just said, look, uh, God told me to call you, Henry. Do you need anything? And with pride, because that's who we are, with pride. I was like, well, I'm fine. You know, no, I'm, I'm okay. And it's like God was just speaking through him. Robert said to me, Henry, now I know 
God told me to call you. I'm going to ask you for the last time. Do you need anything? All of a sudden, I start spilling the beans. I just start telling him everything. Oh, shit, man stole my money. And, da, 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 da. And, and, and he listened, and he listened, and he listened. Didn't interrupt me. And when he, I was done with all of that, he said, now, what's your account number? What's your account number? And I thought about it. And I said, okay. Because, you know, I... Again, when you're broke. <laughs> Some of you are so private and ain't got no reason to be private. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm like, why am I going to give this guy my account number? I just gave it to him. And you know what Mr. Bland did? When I told him I, I, I was robbed $475,000, he wired $475,000 to the church's account. Just wired it. He said, here's the money, Henry. Go finish the building. Why did that happen? It's attached to my obedience. I was so far from my success. I heard God says, obey me. And I was mature enough to understand that seed works. You're sitting in this building only because we saved up $120,000, and when God gave, I wasn't looking for this. I was not looking for this. And when God said, this is your building, he then challenged me to do something that scares, it scared the heck out of me. He said, there are 12 churches. Now, I know your church, the Faith Center, is in need, but there are 12 churches I want you to bless $10,000 each. How many of you would have $120,000 in your account? You need almost $8 million to do a deal. And God is telling you to give it all away. Here's the reason why you would judge a person like me is you don't even know your Bible. You don't even know your Bible. That multiple times in the Bible, in one particular instance, there was a woman who was in debt. And the man of God said to her, here's what I need you to do. Go borrow some vessels. You have a little oil. Just a little. See, some of you, I only have a little. Go borrow some vessels, not a few. I'm going to show you how to pay your debts and live off the rest and be wealthy. Go get the vessels. Go in your house, shut the door, suggesting that you don't have to broadcast to people what you're doing. Half of them won't believe you anyway. And you should not open your mouth and tell everybody your business. And the Bible says she kept pouring, she kept pouring, she kept pouring until when she went to the last container, the oil stopped. The man of God said to her, I tell you what, here's what you need to do. Sell the oil, turn you into a business, sell it, pay your debts, watch this, and live after the re on the rest. God will prompt you. When you go to the next level. I am who I am. This ministry is where we are today. Because we were willing to bless 12 churches. $10,000 each in the midst of our need. And God called that same man. Mr. Bland, he was an earthly angel. He's gone home to be with the Lord God. Kept him alive long enough to bless Henry. I wonder who God is keeping on the earth long enough to bless you. Just waiting for you to develop and be spiritually mature. Waiting for you to level up. That same man said to me, do you want me to wire the money to buy this building? to the same account because I was spiritually mature to hear the voice of God when he's prompting me to be generous could it be that you're holding your blessing because God has already spoken to you bless that young lady bless that single mother bless the ministry 
bless dear to care. There's a lot of hungry people in our community. Just because you can go to the grocery store and pick up groceries and easily pay it and even waste food out of your refrigerator. God is proud. Listen, if you're not hearing from God to give, something is wrong with you. You cannot be a believer and be stingy. You cannot be a Christian and not have compassion. You need to examine your faith walk. You have to. You see, the unique thing about going to the next level is it requires only for you to start where you are and not where you've been. May I have the ladder, please? May I have it? Please put it right here, sir. Right here. Thank you. Going to the next level. Next level. Next level. Requires you to start where you're at. Not where you've been. Going to the next level doesn't start by going back. Why do you constantly hear the Holy Spirit say to you, go to the next level, and instead of going to the next level, you go back. You go back into thinking the same negative things, the things that are false, that you keep going back, leaning on things that won't edify you. You're not in the Word of God. You don't read your Bible. Yeah, you want to be blessed. You scream, oh, I wanted my life to go to the next level. But how is your life going to go to the next level when you keep the same negative company? When you still hang out with people who don't even believe in God? People that when you leave their presence, you feel completely lost, completely confused. Why do you keep doing that? So ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to tell you, wherever you are in life, all God wants you to do is to start from where you are and take the step to the next level. Step up to a higher place in Him. And the starting point is right where you are. Where you are is an opportunity to level up. Oh, I wish you could see what your future holds for you. I wish you could see the blessings, how God wants to elevate your life. I wish you could see what he has for you in October, November, December, 2024, 2025, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Because this next level is about taking your life to the next level of success that is in alignment with God's purpose for your life. This next level is about you going up and not you going back. And when you're at this next level, it is so important that you stay tuned with God that this next level is all about being rooted in the Word and not in your feelings or the ideas of man. Not in your feelings. Listen, your feelings is what's destroying you. You cannot allow your feelings. You got to be rooted and grounded in God. You cannot move from where God has planted you. You got to stay where he has planted you. Do me a favor. Uh, come here, sweetheart. Yes. Uh, you can come. Come here. Got to be rooted, not distracted. Stay right there, please. Stay right there. You got to be so rooted because next level starts 
where you're at. Not going back, not going back. You're at a pivotal point in your life. Start right there. Stay right there. Uh, come here. First mistake she made. No, 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 don't go back now. You see, you, 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 you already made a mistake. Stay right there. What did I say? How many times God say to you, I got you in the right spot, baby. When I tell you to trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not to your own understanding. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. My sheep hear my voice. A stranger, they will not go. How many of you were standing at a perfect place? And heard God said to you, stay where I planted you. I don't care how tough it gets. I don't care how difficult it gets. No matter what, whoever is calling you from a blessed place, do not listen or move. All I said to her is come here. And she forgot. I said, stay. No, that can be confusing. But you said, come. No. I could say she's asking. She's inquiring. God, I know you said stay. Is that you now moving me out of my position? But here's what the apostle say right there. Here's what the, I bet you she won't make that mistake again. Here's what the Apostle Paul says, because I'm absolutely fascinated with how he dealt with the issue of spiritual fullness in Christ. Colossians 2, 5 to 7. I love this. I love this. He says, for though I am absent from you in body, Paul speaking, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are, how disciplined you are. I'm excited that your ability to be disciplined doesn't predicate on my presence. The pastor don't have to be around. When God speaks to you, it's not about the pastor. It's about God. And then he said in verse 6, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue, continue to live your lives in him. How? Rooted. Rooted. I don't care who's calling you over there. Rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness stay right there rooted I don't care I don't care what it is struggling to make ends meet struggling in your relationship feel unsatisfied because you've been waiting for a spouse and you're sincere and it just can't seem to happen maybe somebody did you wrong and you really want God to fix them just stay where you are rooted because it is impossible for you to go to the next level in Jesus Christ if you don't renew your mind and understand where he planted you is where he will affirm you is where he'll keep you well pastor I'm at an uncomfortable place and so forth yeah listen right where you're at he has aligned things up whatever it is next job next business idea he has already aligned things to take you higher. So now, rather than being at the same level, you now can look. I see it now. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. The clouds are gone because you're at the next level. But you see, anytime you let the enemy pull you away, try to step up. Step up. That's not step up. That's walking on the same level. 
she's not in alignment with the successes that God has for her. So as much as she's hearing, step up, go to the next level, all she's doing is walking. Walking. I don't know how long some of you just going to keep walking and then make no progress. Don't shout me down now. How long? You've been walking for the last five years. No progress. Since January, no progress. And you wonder why? You're not in alignment. You're not positioned. Somehow, somebody called you away from the position God placed you. Somehow, you've allowed a man to call you away and distract you from your purpose. You've allowed a woman to call you away. You've allowed a friend to call you away. You've allowed your feelings to call you away. You've allowed hurts and failures to call you away from where God strategically aligned you. Going to the next level. Watch this. Starts in the mind. Thank you, sweetheart. Come on, give her a hand, please. Starts here. I'm about to close now. Just work with me here. I'm about to close here. So Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. <laughs> you will never get lost. Wherever you go, my eye is on you. So I counsel you, and I'll bring you to a place called next level, where you level up. It's only up from here. I'm telling you, it's only up from here, because I got my eye on you. Well, what if I fall? I don't like heights. Well, oh, God, what is, no, 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 no. When God got his eye on you, <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Come on, tell your neighbor it's only up from here. You can only go up. I don't know who this word is for. It's only up from here. Where God's taking you, folks going to start look up and say, wait a minute. Is that the same woman? Is that the same man? You see, in this season, I want to encourage you to go to the next level and to level up, if you will, and take your life to a greater level in Christ. Let me suggest this to you. You have to do it mentally and set your mind to doing five things. And I close. I don't know who this is for. Somebody is streaming. Please hear, please hear, Pastor. Please. Please, if there's a message in 2023 that you need to pay attention to, it's this one. Stay where God has planted you. Stay right there. You can't see how you're going to level up from here. The greatest mistake you'll ever make is to let something or someone trick you from where he planted you. Watch this. You are, listen. Mm. You are already at a level. You can't see it because your feelings are driving you crazy. He's already got you at a level. You have come too far to allow the enemy to trick you. So here's what a lot of you are trying to do. You are trading where you are to step up for another place where the devil has taken you. You're stepping down. And he has created another level or layers for you to follow. But wait a minute. Isn't this stage higher than where I'm standing? Isn't? Okay. Some of you looking at me like, I'm at a higher level. Steps. I have steps, but where's my level? Yeah. 
You want to make steps, but isn't it stupid to go backward, to climb to the place you are already possess? So the enemy's tricking you. Instead of moving forward, he now reposition you and trick you to say, oh, I got steps. You, you switch where God planted you to where your mind is. So if you, okay, and you feel that you're stepping up, but in reality, you haven't made progress because this is where the devil took you from. He took you from here. So all that stuff you're saying that you did, it wasn't a step up. It was really a step down. Because you haven't gained ground. That's why if you look back on your life, come on, tell the truth. What progress have you made? Who are you blaming? Could it be that the enemy took you from a place where God planted you? Write these three things down. Here's what you need to do, or five things I should say down. You need to level up in the word. You need to level up in the word. The word has to be your foundation. You have to oh, get in the word, get out of your feelings, level up in the word. Number two, you have to level up and share your faith with others. I don't need you to raise your hand. I don't need you to even comment in the comment section right now. But I want you to be honest to yourself. Listen to me. When was the last time you really spoke to someone about your God? When was the last time in a conversation you say, look, man, let me tell you about God, man. This God that I serve is awesome. He took my life from zero, man. I tell you, man, I prayed the other day and he opened up some doors. I was feeling discouraged and God just blessed me. You know, here's the miracle that God worked in my life. Hey, by the way, man, God is good, man. I'm telling you he's good. When was the last time you went on social media and posted, look, man, I went to church and the message really touched me. And by the way, today, I don't know who needs to hear this, but today is going to be a brighter day for you. God, God loves you. How much of that you are doing or how much of the garbage you're posting on your platform? Scrub your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, your social media platform. And I really want you to come out of yourself and have a mature mind and analyze what you're putting out there. Is there anything about Christ on your platform? Think about that. I'm not talking to the unbeliever now. If you call yourself a Christian, when was the last time you shared your faith? Think about that. When was the last time you told people about God, but you are quick to promote gossip? You are quick to repost other stuff, divisive comments that other people are making. You know, you, you want to know why America is sick? We have an appetite more for evil and gossip more than for truth. Number three, you have to level up to loving yourself. You know how many people sitting in this church today and people are streaming? You got, I mean, you're looking good. Your makeup is done. Your hair is done. Sir, you got on nice clothes. You're looking good. But you really don't love yourself. No many women in this room, you're looking for a man to affirm you. You think this of yourself because he broke you. You don't even love yourself. And because you don't love yourself, you hate other women. Because real sisters are not intimidated by another sister. Yeah. 
you watch a woman who says, I don't trust no other woman. I don't care about these women. Ain't nobody like me. You watch that kind of a woman. Because a woman who's truly confident, watch this, is not in, insulting other women. It is embracing other women. Even the ones who are hurt. Number four, you ought to level up with your love walk. Level up with your love walk. Do you really love? Why are so many of you Christians so bitter and full of hate? Why did so many of you get caught up in the last general election? Hating people. In the name of God. <laughs> Why? Why do you live every day of your life hating people? You're not walking in love. When was the last time? Woo! When was the last time? It's going to hit home right now. If you're sitting next to your spouse, hold on. When was the last time you told your spouse, I love you? I didn't tell you to laugh. I told you to just... When was the last time you look your wife in the eye, babe, I love you. Thank you. Man, we made it this far. I love you. When was the last time you looked your husband in the eye and said, I love you. You're special to me. You are it for me. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time? Because all that person is hearing is what they're not doing right. And don't you see, the enemy shift you from a higher level because you don't love. You want people to love you. And I know what some of you are thinking. Well, he ain't tell me he loved me. See, that's it. It's all self-centeredness. He has never told me he... Well, why don't you start the conversation? Instead of waiting on the other person. Love you. And we call ourselves Christians. We come into the house of the Lord. And we say God is love. And we come in and have, and many of you sitting next to people you don't like. How can you go to the next level when you can't even tell your brothers and sisters in the church you love them? That the people you live with, you don't love them. That you can leave your house and go love on somebody else's house and do for other people that you won't even do for your own house. Don't shout me down now. Next level is walking in love. Walking in love. Walking in love. Won't you speak in another tongues until you tell that person you love them? Don't you be shouting. Don't you be doing all that kind of a stuff. Rather than doing this, just say, hey, I love you. Love is healing. Number five, go to the next level of your generosity. Go to the next level of your generosity where you say, God, you place me right here in this season of my life because where I'm going, I got to be much higher than where I started. So God, I'm going to give like I've never given before. I'm going to love like I've never loved before. I'm going to read your word like I've never done it before. 
I'm going to serve like I've never served before. Because I'm leveling up. I'm taking my life to another level. Bow your heads with me, please. Please, stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Did God say anything to you today? Did he tell you anything? Did he challenge you to go to a higher place? Was this moment a moment of just excitement? Or was it a moment where the word did surgery on you? Where you can cry out to God, search me, O oh God. And see if there's any wicked, evil ways in me so I can become more like you. Do me a favor. Lift both hands towards him right now. Come on. Wherever you are, you're streaming. Lift both hands in that room, in that hospital room, in that little office on the job. Lift, lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I really believe you spoke to this church today, this body of people. I thank you that we see the need to level up spiritually and mentally. That God, there's a place you want to take all of us. So therefore, we lift our spiritual antennas, our hands, and we're saying, okay, God, we surrender. We're not going to fight it anymore. You can allow the Holy Spirit to arrest us and to bring us to a place of total surrender where we give it all to you, where it's all about you now, God. It's not about ourselves. It's about serving you. It's not about getting out of alignment. It is about now being in alignment with your word. So, Father, everything that you're asking us to do, we're willing to do it, God. It's only up from here. It's only up from here, God. It's only up from here. Heal relationships in this room and those who are streaming, I pray. Heal minds, I pray. Businesses, Lord God. Heal people in their careers, God. Even people who are doubting, even people who don't love themselves in their love walk, Father. I pray for healing now, even in the idea of generosity, those who are struggling, God, that they will see that you want to take them to a greater place. You want to do so much more for them. But they've got to level up because we have so many days left in September and God, you've got so many things in store for them, but they've got to reposition themselves to where you have planted them so we surrender everything to you now and we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the name of Jesus with your head still bowed and your eyes are still closed. Whether you're streaming or in this room, and I don't know if you know the Lord as your personal Savior today, but you cannot level up if he is not the center of your life. If he's not the center of your life. You may put your hands down. But if you're in this room, if you're streaming and you want to level up with him and you want to say, God, I give up, I surrender, I turn my life over to you, I say yes to your will, to your way. If that's you this morning, I want you to say the sinner's prayer. I want you to confess it with your mouth. I want you to believe in your heart that you, you are a sinner and that, that you're forgiven and then you have to do your part. You have to be faithful to going to church to be edified. You have to read your word. You got to pray. You see, you got to work out your salvation. If that's you and you're ready to surrender, please say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. I embrace the free gift of salvation. And today I'm born again. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you for those who have confessed today. And I really believe if they are serious, they're going to level up. And they're going to make sure that they grow in their faith journey. They'll move from the elementary stage of their faith 
to being fully mature. We thank you for the offering that you told me to wait until the end to receive. I don't know what you're up to, but I know somebody heard you today. I know somebody's been convicted. I know somebody's been struggling with what you told them to do. I pray today they will stay right where you've planted them and level up in their generosity today. Thank you for the seed that they're going to give. I thank you for people streaming who felt a connection with this word, who felt that God, you're speaking to them. And Father, in the future, they cannot hold you accountable to your word if they have not put the word to the test. I thank you that you shall supply their every need. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you receive something from that word, give him praise. Amen.